Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the 4 Tip Make You Loco channel. Uh, so today we are working on a 2006 Ford F-150. It has almost 300,000 miles on it. Don't get too excited. Uh, the engine didn't last that long, but I imagine it lasted into the maybe the mid 200s on here uh, because he put in a powertrain products remand engine, uh, which is still a good engine. He put it in about a year ago, I believe. Uh, and it's been just fine ever since. And then just recently, uh, it started acting up again like he's having VCT issues, high, uh, you know, oil flow and, and pressure and volume issues. Uh, and he thinks I'm having, you know, VCT timing errors all over again. Uh, so he brought it down to get diagnosed, see if he needs to invoke his warranty or not. Uh, and I said, okay, bring it down. Let me diagnose it first because that doesn't make sense. Uh, it's probably something else. Um, so I went ahead and looked at it under the hood, started it up to move it over to another spot here in my spots. And it's, it, I diagnosed it already. I, I, it, it's, it's that, it's that quick. And this is why I like doing diagnostic work. I'm really good at diagnostic work, whether it be easy like this one or they're hard and intricate. And I'm really good at it maybe because I enjoy it. So I want to walk you through what it looks like, what it sounds like. That's more interesting to you guys, uh, how to identify it. Uh, so we'll go to the scan tool, check out a few things on there, and then we'll let you listen to it, and then we'll let you uh, uh, see what's going on under the hood. All right, on to some scan tool diagnostics. Look at that, 298 on there. These trucks are great work trucks uh, as long as you maintain them. So let's go ahead and pull codes. The very first thing you want to do is pull codes anytime the engine is running rough, and you, of course, have a check engine light on there. Now with these codes, you see there's a lot of codes going on here. What you want to do is just take a picture of the codes, clear the codes, and then start off fresh. Let it set new codes and see what's actually current. And this is why you want to take these codes with a grain of salt. So let's say you're working on, you know, your, your relative's vehicle or something like that, your buddy's vehicle, a customer's vehicle. They are probably in there digging around, trying to diagnose it themselves. Case in point are these codes right here. So we got a 10 code and we got a 20 code right here. Basically, these codes are set when the circuit is opened up for the VCT solenoid. So the old trick with these, if you think there's a VCT concern, um, you can disconnect the VCT solenoids and that will disable the, the PCM from actuating the VCT system. Let it stay locked and you can see if your drivability concern goes away. So I imagine the customer's in here since he thinks it's a VCT concern and he's disconnecting them, trying to diagnose it himself. Other code right here, very generic code, misfires on startup. Of course, if we have a drivability concern, that's gonna happen, no duh. Now, P1233 code, fuel pump driver module offline. This could happen for any reason. Like this vehicle has a bunch of work done to it, lots of miles on it. Doesn't really tell me how old the code is. Again, I'm gonna ignore it for right now because the vehicle starts. Now with this uh, pump, this uh, fuel pump driver module, which mounts to the uh, frame in the back, the cross member, they like to rot out and then they pop a fuse and they set this code and you get a no start concern. Since the vehicle starts as of right now, I am not concerned about that code, but it should be noted because it is a common failure on there. Now it's 2006 code for the IMRC rod stuck closed on the intake manifold. So when you put me, the guy installed the engine, he wasn't familiar with the intake manifold and the, the, the wire harness routing for the uh, knock sensors, CHT sensor, and the IMRC motor connector and wire. So the wires all route through the IMRC rod a certain way. And if you don't do it right, they will bind when it tries to actuate and we'll set this code. Again, will not cause a drivability concern here. Not my problem. It's definitely not the customer's problem with uh, his drivability concern either. So we're not going after that. So these two codes right here are interesting to me though. So we have a 2195 and a 2197. So this is basically indicating that no matter what the PCM does to correct the fuel trims, these two upstream O2 sensors are they're, they're stuck lean. It cannot get them to break. Okay. So you can see right here, we have a, a, a HO2S11, which is bank one sensor one. That's how you read it. And then we have 21, which is bank two. 
sensor one, which is the um, fuel control oxygen sensor, let's just say. Those are the ones that actually um, send information back and then adjust the fuel terms based on that. So those two are interesting to me. So what we're gonna do now, like I said, is we are going to clear the codes. This is all great information about what happened in the past, but what's happening right now. So we're gonna clear the codes. We're gonna run the truck until we you know, identify and recreate what the customer's complaining about. And then we're gonna go from there. If it's running as bad as he says it is, we're going to get, you know, new code set that are current that we should be diagnosing. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that. Let it run horrible for a while and recreate it. And we're going to see what the new codes are. Plus, we're going to look at some live data. Live data can tell you a whole lot more than just pulling codes. Okay, let's verify the concern. So whenever I have a lean concern or possibly a you know, timing error concern, timing BCT concern, these are the PIDs I'll bring up on here. So of course you want your, your long fuel trims for both banks and your shorts right here. Uh, we're gonna check our math just to make sure that's not skewed, especially a key on engine off like you see here, zero volts, gravy. Uh, make sure that none of the uh, O2 sensors are skewed. They have some voltage reading right now because I drove it in uh, to the shop, but they're not skewed, good to go there. And then, of course, we're going to monitor our VCT error when it's hot and acting up like that to make sure it's not jumping all around. Ideally, it should be hovering around zero. So let's go ahead and start it up. Let's go take a listen quick. It's not if you can tell or not. Shake, the engine's shaking, the engine's laboring, okay? So the other thing you notice right now is this. Okay, so classic signs of a large vacuum leak. Engine's laboring, especially at idle, especially at a hot idle, and we hear a hissing noise. Large vacuum leak somewhere in this area, causing the fuel trims to be way off. So bad, in fact, that the PCM cannot compensate for it. Therefore, the O2s are staying low in voltage, indicating stuck lean. So now you just need to find the vacuum leak. So it's pretty obvious in this one. Um, the most common area on the 543 valve it's usually this brake vacuum tube right here, okay? So everything up here and over here and over here is usually okay, but down here goes to a metal line and then back to a rubber line on the back side of the intake. They get swollen with oil and they fall off. Very, very common. That's a huge vacuum leak. This one, much easier in our case, it's right here. You see me shaking now because it engine's shaking so bad. So you can see it right here. So on the old, you know, two valves and stuff like that, when they had rubber ECD elbows and stuff like that, they would get swollen with the rubber, with the oil going through them and they deteriorate and eventually over time, they would suck in on cells and make this little like slit looking thing like this. And it would just collapse only under vacuum while the engine's running. It would come to a slit and it would start sucking air and cause this exact concern. This one apparently is on both sides. So watch. This one, of course, is out in the open. It's very easy. You can hear it. We can see it's not normal. This one constantly has vacuum in it, no matter if the purge valve is on or not. So let's grab it. Engine runs a million times better already and it'll slowly uh, adjust the fuel trims around perfect. And no more hiss noise. Regular valve train noise. That quick. So a uh, visual is very, very important, especially if someone else has been in here, especially in this case, 
if the vehicle has tons of miles on it. So this line, they get soft like this. They start crumbling like this, okay? Very common. You're gonna actually collapse like this and suck vacuum. Not too common. But again, you gotta remember, this vehicle had, has currently 300,000 miles on that line. So it just probably failed. But otherwise, you may see these collapsed when they're like a pancake and they're, they're flat and like a pancake, but there's no actual slits in them. This one, it's just had enough. 300,000 miles is over. So again, the, the customer or whoever's looking at this is they're, they're, they're trying to diagnose it, it's running horrible. Five fours known for VCT concerns, it's gotta be that. They're fixated, they're roaming around in here doing stuff, and they didn't even notice this huge leak. I mean, it's very loud, very obvious. And it takes all of two seconds to diagnose it. At the trained ear though, I come in here, I, I know what these sound like, and I know what to look for right away. I zeroed right in on it. So let's see what it looks like on the scan tool when it's happening before it dies here. So what I'll need to do is let this reset because I've been, I was squeezing it, fixing it, coming back, and now it's just running horrible. You can see right now it's stuck in limbo. It's not a good example, unfortunately. I'll reset it so I can do it for you. But right now it saw it fixed. It doesn't know what to do. It might even be an open loop right now. You can see none of our O2s are reading any voltage on here. It's running lean as can be. They're stuck lean. Our math is good, but you can see our long terms and our short terms, they're not trying to correct our O2 concern because I think it's an open loop right now because I've messed with it so much. We're gonna shut it off, turn it back on. Make sure this stuff loads. There we go, we're live again. And now it should do it. So the reason why I left that in there is because you need to realize the way this the system software is designed. After a while, it kind of just gives up and it just kind of lets it run for a while and see what happens. Now you can see we're running lean, no voltage. Now it's cranking it up until we start seeing a response in the O2s and you're gonna to start to see it over here. But look how high it's getting. There we go, that's better. 40s, 50s. I mean, we're off the charts here. We're off the charts. And it's trying to correct it. 50s. VCT's gravy, it's dancing around zero. We know it's not a concern. So we're maxing around 55 or so here. Look at that. See the O2s? We still can't get a response out of them. They're flatline. That's why it's setting those, uh, was it 29, 2195, 2197 codes? Because the vacuum leak is so large, even with max correction, it cannot get it to respond. So it thinks there's no way. It's gotta be something wrong with the O2 sensors. And that's why it doesn't initially, at least, throw the common PO171, 174, bank one and two lean codes. This is why. There, there you go. See it? It just died out. Now it just died out because it just, it was so far. The correction was so far. It couldn't do it anymore. It was at hot idle. It would definitely die if you put it into gear and put a load on it. The other thing I want to point out here is you see how it says low oil pressure and it died out. That is because you didn't turn the key off. So the, 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 the cluster here and everything is, is wondering what's going on. The, the engine is supposed to be running and I'm not getting a good oil pressure reading anymore. What's up? Because you never turned the key off, the engine died. So it's not because there's an oil pressure concern, that is just the cluster reacting to you, the engine shutting down and you not turning the key off to shut it down. So it thinks it's still running right now with the oil pressure, basically. So you gotta ignore that whenever you're diagnosing a drivability concern. 
concentrating on drivability and, the, and diagnosing it. Forget all the other stuff. So we can see we have a huge vacuum leak and it's because of that line. This is a very simple diagnosis. Will I still charge the customer in my usual hour? You're darn right. You wanna know why? Because that's all experience. So let's take a look at this line real quick. Now, for me anyway, you know, we're gonna get, to get, get, get this line coming for this customer so he can get his vehicle back. There's a couple of dealers here that have it. They're gonna jump through hoops to get it here for the customer and fix it before the New Year's. Um, and of course, it di quick disconnects here and it quick disconnects over here. And that is a little clip back there to hold it in place. So obviously I'm not gonna charge for that. So it's just gonna be one hour diagnosis in the part. Pretty darn cheap. Um, and no fighting with the warranty company trying to get the engine, you know, warranty because there's no problem with it. So you got off lucky on this one. So what you can do in a situation like this, any situation you're diagnosing a lean concern and you want to really verify it's the concern and that that's the only concern causing your drivability issue. What you can do, since you can't squeeze the hose and drive, is you can simply come over here Release, release the um, hose over here. You just squeeze it. And it should come off like that. A little, there we go. Squeeze that in, pull it off. Now we have the vacuum port in the manifold sitting there. What you do is you get a little plug like this right here. Put the plug on here. And we're gonna cap off any potential vacuum leaks. So that's now capped off on there. You can leave it disconnected here and even disconnected over here. All this stuff, it doesn't matter because our vacuum source, which is the intake, is now capped off. So let's go back over again in real time and let's see how it looks when you fix the concern. So again, we're gonna make sure we have live data. Oh, it looks like it's there. You gotta kind of babysit the IDS. So we're gonna start it up, see how it runs. So you can see right away, our voltages went way up and it came in running rich. And that's our cycling. So all these O2s, they responded right away. So now without clearing the, the cam and everything else, we're gonna let it reset. So it went back to its values that were stored, which was like 19 or so on there. And now it's slowly bringing them down as it sees that the voltage is too high and we're running rich. So you look back and you sit there and watch it. It's literally self-correcting right now. So again, our VCTs are okay. Our math reading is okay. You know, uh, 0 0.6a is perfect for these vehicles. So what we're looking for is our downstream O2s, our flatlining kind of high. You know, usually uh, most newer ones are close to uh, uh, 0 0.8, but the older vehicles like this at 0 0.6 something, generally 0 0.76 maybe max. So those are flatlining, we're good. And then our upstreams, uh, bank one and bank two are looping. They're switching. So they're switching. The cat is, it has high efficiency because we're allowing the air to come in and out. And then our, that's good. And then our long terms, anything below 10 is gravy. Uh, ideally below seven or eight. Once they get 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, I start getting worried there's a little something going on there. But anything below 20 is okay for federal emission standards on there. So we're sitting around 4 to 5 on the long terms. And then our short terms are switching right around 0 like they should be. So everything on here now is in spec just by capping off that one little line on there. So in this situation... What you can do is you can go ahead and clear codes. We're just gonna do a cam reset on here. You could just disconnect your battery for five, 10 minutes, do the same thing. This just does it instantly. What this will do is it'll literally 
clear all learn values, you know, from it running lean and all that other stuff and us messing around. It clears everything, brings it back to stock, starts over fresh. We have our we have our one and only um, concern fixed, which is the large vacuum leak. So at this point, with that fixed temporarily and everything reset. This thing should not only read properly, uh, but it should not throw any more codes for lean codes, and we should um, have no drivability concerns, nothing like that. So basically putting that cap on there temporarily is allowing us to really verify that's our only concern present. So let's go ahead and look at power balance real quick on here. good look at that that's just another check can do see it's nice and flat all the way across we're good there let's see what it's starting to learn uh, as far as the uh, fuel trims and stuff like that so you'll see it right here it went up to like 10 or so it's trying to get the o2s to wake up they woke up and now went back down three four five six and then because it's hot already and it's closed loop, quickly it learned the long terms. Again, five, six, four, five, six. And now we're switching around zero and everybody's satisfied. So at this point we can do, since everything's in check, is you would go for a test drive to make sure everything's okay. Make sure your values are in check. Make sure your idle's in check. Make sure it doesn't die out anymore. Make sure the engine's nice and smooth. Do a regular road test drive and see if everything looks good and feels good, sounds good. Under the hood here, obviously it sounds better. Running smooth, look at that. So we're good there. And that's it. So that is the way to diagnose something like this. When you have a concern with the vehicle and it's running horrible like that, you want to go after any kind of vacuum leaks if you have lean codes like that or stuck lean O2 sensors. You know it's going to be a large uh, vacuum leak causing the concern, especially when they're stuck lean like that on both banks. It's very obvious. Open the hood. If you hear a vacuum leak, go after it. It's not normal to hear that hissing noise. Figure it out, order the lineup, and it's fixed. It's that simple, guys. See you guys next time.